a foaming sea and huge waves, it's winter at Seaford. But is it worth fishing? This video covers winter marks and methods, species caught during the day and rig choice for catching these. When the sea is roaring and you're questioning your sanity but still find a need to be on the beach, I head for the deep end at Seaford and normally it's between Dane Heights and Beachcombers that you'll find me. I normally fish Seaford in the spring and summer, um, preferring to fish elsewhere during the winter, but I've had a couple of requests for this video, so here we go. In rough conditions, safety should be your number one concern, and I've set up a good distance away from the water's edge, further than you really need to be. The last thing you want is your gear being swamped by a rogue wave. Anyone who fishes venues like Chesil will know all about this. The gear you fish with needs to be robust and you reduce some of the problems by fishing with just one rod. At times you might find yourself having to hold this against your tripod and your tripod of course should be weighted down with a large bag of stones. I ignore the cups on my tripod preferring to push the butt of my rod into the shingle. This gives the setup extra stability. The last thing you want is for your rod to be pulled over and dragged along the beach. Due to the large breakers, the rod tip must be held up high. I tighten up to lead weight as much as I can and I'm looking out for drop back bites or big slack liners. The thumbs up says it's just about fishable under these conditions. Since I prefer the continental setup of long rods and fixed ball reels, my go to rod is a Daiwa Grand Wave. This is 16 foot and more powerful than most continental rods. Bait is primarily black lug and squid, but I have brought some sprats um, to, for tipping should I have to be scratching for fish. Black lug and squid on loop rigs with 1 O's and 2 O's is both substantial and streamlined enough to get some distance. If the cod are there, then a whole large squid on a panel pulley with 3 O's to 5 O hooks should do the business. Unfortunately, in this session, conditions worsened and I had to stop filming. No cod, just whiting, but some of these are a fairly large size. Locals will have their own winter hotspots, but these are the marks I prefer to fish starting with Martella Road. This is before you get to Splash Point and is relatively snag free and has the added advantage of being close to public toilets adjacent to Seaford Museum which is in the Martello itself. Near the Beach Cafe is my favourite mark for early place and souls. For the odd chance of coddling I tend to head for Dane Heights as mentioned earlier and up to towards Beachcombers. A block of flats now stands at the end of Dane Road, where the pub once was. West of this you have Salt's Recreational Ground and the well-known Summer Marks. When there's little wind and the place haven't turned up, it can be pretty hard during the day. In these conditions you have to be prepared to search the ground and scratch for whatever might turn up. You'll find a lot of anglers going to the Edinburgh Road to Buckle End, hoping to catch an early place but I prefer to go well away from the crowds uh, with the hope of actually catching something at all. Beefed up gear is not needed in these conditions and I'll have 20 pound rather than 30 pound or 50 pound braid as my real line. I'll fish with a pair of continental rods held low and my scratching rigs composed of boom rigs for closer in in a variety of forms and short snud rigs distance work and these are clipped down and without beads or any other type of bling. Timid bites show up better with short snoods and of course these keep the bait close to the seabed where the dabs are to be found. Clipping down rather than using flappers means extra distance can be covered and just using two snoods rather than three also helps. Short boom rigs can still be thrown a good distance if needs be but I like to use a few beads on these 
so they're normally reserved for short to medium range. So one rod with a rig without beads and the other one with a rig which has beads again gives you different options uh, and um, should one of them outscore the other you can always change and double up. Same goes with casting distance. Should you catch on one line and just change the other rod to fish the same distance. Small hooks and small baits are the order of the day. Size 4s and size 6s with small bits of black lug, a sticky lug, salty lug or whatever uh, and ragworm as well. Ragworm works. Small ragworm, smaller the better. A small strip of squid or any fish baits will add extra scent um, if that's what's needed to, to lure anything at all, uh, even a whiting. Um, now sometimes of course you'd want to use much longer slid lengths, particularly if, you, if whiting is your target, but um, that's not really what I really come to fish for. I much prefer to try and catch dabs if I can, so my all of my slid lengths are, sh are short. A lot of anglers dislike rockling, but these quite often save a blank on a really hard winter's day. I wouldn't want to be catching slugs all day, but when there's nothing else about, I'm pretty grateful for whatever comes along. don't want to be missing bites like this uh, when you're not getting very many or getting stuck. Although it's not really snag it Martello Road, the ground over which you're fishing is a little bit uneven and there is a mussel bed out there and I have brought in a couple of small pea mussels. My bait had been stripped off this distance rig, so I'm swapping over now to a free hook clip down version um, with marginally longer snuds. Um, again, not that long, um, still trying to keep them relatively close to the bottom. Using free baits though should, in theory, extend the scent trail. Clipping down means I'll still get a good distance um, and if I don't really want to do that I can leave them unclipped and chuck it closer in the same sort of line that I'm fishing the boom rig at. A tiny drop back bite which I might not have seen if I hadn't been using braid and uh, a fish on. already mentioned on a day like this I'm grateful for anything um, even a sea scorpion on this day I caught another one of these and no whiting um, however I did get plagued by velvet crabs these gave me false bites but aren't anywhere near as bad as spider crabs in late spring sometimes though you do get lucky calm conditions with clear water in late January is usually a struggle. I've headed to beachcombers because the run of place has meant that the buckle end of a beach is packed solid. Similar rigs to those I've used at Martello Road but this time a little bit more positive with size 2s and size 4 hooks and slightly bigger lugworm baits. But I've still got my two snood clip down rig on standby should I need to chuck it a very long way. I've arrived just before the top of the tide in the early morning 
and I couldn't believe how many people were already on the beach. So I've gone at least 300 yards past the last person. He was at the Edinburgh Road end of the salts, leaving a big gap between me and the other anglers means we're not competing for the same fish. Also means I can film, whereas I probably wouldn't want to do that if I'm surrounded by lots of others. Once again, one long cast and one short cast covers your options. My short boom rig has a 3 ounce flat lead um, and as you can see by the left hand rod um, it is moving a little bit with the tide. I've heard it's not much of a, of a tidal, tidal run at all. Um, a little bit of movement sometimes creates a bit of interest. Actually dragging or twitching your rig also helps with this. didn't take long for a bite, but it's to the distance rod. I thought I felt fish on, but I changed my mind and assumed it's got off. However, having drawn it in a little bit closer, the rod goes again. And this time the target species is caught a flatfish and it's a place. 23rd of January. Back out to what I think is the same spot and another bite immediately. This time the place is slightly bigger but once again on top snud so it looks like they do want a little bit of movement and not have the bait completely nailed down on the bottom I had swapped the boom rig over to the two hook clip down rig and now this finds some action as well. The hook's not that far down but it requires disgorging. Now looks like this is going to be a pretty good session, reminiscent of what it's like in late spring. Bites are pretty easy to spot. they don't all result in hooked fish or well, sometimes you can feel the fish coming off
an hour down the tide and things are getting very hectic. With bikes on both rods at all distances Here the short boom rig comes good. This one though has only got two little red beads instead of a string of yellows and has been cast much further out than before. and the same rig produces the first whiting. When the weather conditions are good, I like to be as close to the water's edge as possible, so here's my first move down the beach. If I'd stayed on the strand line, I'd have to either be dragging the fish up the beach, which I don't like to do, or having to move down as I'm playing a fish and landing it, uh, in which case I don't know what's I wouldn't know what's happening with my other rod, and could miss bites on that. Things have gone a little bit quiet halfway down the tide, so again I'm dragging the baits along the bottom to try and stir things up a bit. and that seems to work. This time though it's a dab, the first of this session. It does appear that they prefer to be feeding over low water here. I'm now trying to chase these at distance, so it's back to the two hook clip down rig, or what I have preferred to call in previous videos as my sole rig. I didn't catch another dab, but what a terrific day, um, especially for this time of year. It's not many winter days th that you're going to get which are like this. Anyway, eight place, four whiting and one dab. Roll on the spring.